The Oppo Reno Ace it shares a lot of characteristics with a certain Realme flagship, but it's also quite different in a few ways. Now, I've been using it as my primary for a little over a week, and in this video, I'm gonna be summing up my thoughts on how Oppo has fared with their latest flagship Ace. Hey guys, Ash here from C4E Tech, and if you do end up liking what you see in this video, please don't forget to turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Let's now get this video started. The most unique aspect of the Renault A is it's gotta be its battery and charging. Now, like we saw with the X2 Pro, there are two batteries inside, two 2000 mAh batteries totaling 4000 mAh. But unlike the Realme X2 Pro, this here supports 65 watts SuperBook 2.0 charging. So what's the difference between 50 watts and 65? Well, about three minutes. The Renault Ace goes from zero to 100 in 28 minutes. Now compared to the X2 Pro, that's three minutes faster. The X2 Pro took 31. Well, that's not a huge difference. It's still pretty impressive since as of today, this is the fastest charger available for any smartphone in the market. As for the battery life itself, the Renault Ace, despite being very similar to the Realme X2 Pro, both with regards to the hardware and software, I feel it lasted a little longer. I'd say it fared about 10% better than the X2 Pro. I don't really know why. I easily got a day of moderate use on a single charge with the X2 Pro, and I kind of did the same here too with the Renault Ace, but I just felt like I ended my, I mean, kind of similar days of use with more left in the tank. Now, if I push the A's with more gaming, GPS, or camera usage, then just like with the X2 Pro, I could exhaust the battery in under a day. Uh, but again, given how fast this charges, I mean, a quick 15 minute charge gets it from zero to 70. I had no problems uh, with battery here. Now, talking about GPS, I did use a fair bit of it when I was riding around and the Ace had no issues locking on. And the display here, it is as bright as the one on the X2 Pro. So navigating with the phone mounted on my bike in the day, it wasn't an issue. Uh, and it seems to be the same panel, 6.5 inches, full HD plus resolution, HDR support. The tech here is Super AMOLED. It's quite a bright panel. It's got vibrant colors, excellent viewing angles. Just like with the X2 Pro's display, it's got a small water drop notch up top. Here's where we have a 16 megapixel selfie camera. This one does a fair job with selfies and even with portraits, it does really well. The background blur was quite good. It felt natural and the selfies came out quite detailed. Now, this selfie camera also helps with face unlock and that was pretty quick. And while on the topic of unlock, the AMOLED panel here also allows for an in-display fingerprint scanner, which was rapid, fast and accurate in my time with it. By the way, this display has a 90 Hz refresh, so everything feels smooth. Whether it's just scrolling through day-to-day -day stuff or gaming, it all looks and feels good. The stereo audio output sounds quite loud. The headphone jack's present, and I did not regret plugging in a pair of headphones here. The output was excellent. Now, of course, being Oppo's flagship phone, the Renault Ace also comes with Qualcomm's flagship chip for the second half of 2019, the Snapdragon 855 Plus. The 855 Plus, at this point of time, it's a tried and tested performer, so there's nothing new for me to say. Pretty much any game, pretty much any app, it handles well. There's competitive mode within game space to help get the most out of the system resources, and Oppo's got their standard software functions that we've seen many a time in the past. This here is ColorOS 6.1 on top of Android 9 Pie. I kinda wish they'd gone with Android 10 and ColorOS 7, but it should get that sooner than later. Now, even apart from gaming, the regular user experience here, it was pretty flawless though. ColorOS has its own fair share of detractors, but here on the Renault Ace, even if you're one of them, even if you're someone who isn't a fan of ColorOS, I'm sure you're not gonna mind ColorOS since the experience here is that good. The Ace is just so snappy. This snappiness can also be attributed to that fast UFS 3.0 storage underneath. Given Oppo is only selling this phone in flavors of 128 and 256 gigs of storage, there is no UFS 2.1 version. Now, in case you didn't know, the reason the X2 Pro has a UFS 2.1 version is because there are no 64 gig UFS 3.0 chips. No such quandaries here, all UFS 3.0 paired with 8 or 12 gigs of RAM. 
The ACE sadly has no room for memory expansion, just dual SIMs. And while we are here, let's also talk build. Now, one of the things most people would like about the ACE, at least in comparison with the X2 Pro, is the logo placement to the back. It is more traditional, and this is still Gorilla Glass 5. By the way, to the front, the ACE gets a leg up over the X2 Pro. It's got the newer Gorilla Glass 6. Barring that, the metal in between, the 8.7mm thickness, the 200 gram weight, they remain unaffected. The dimensions are identical. So in hand, the feel, it's just as good as with the X2 Pro. One feature I almost forgot to mention is the Type-C port that you see here. Not only does it support the super fast 65W proprietary Superbook 2.0 charging, but also USB power delivery just like the X2 Pro. There's Quick Charge 3, so if you forget to pack Oppo's charger, the proprietary one on a trip, you can still utilize a regular Quick Charger and get reasonably fast charging. And like say with a OnePlus phone, where we'd end up with super slow charging if not for the warp charger. Well, the Renault Ace is similar to the X2 Pro in a lot of ways like this. The cameras to the back are a bit different. And let's start with the primary camera. So now, instead of the 64 megapixel Samsung Isocell Bright GM1 that we saw on the X2 Pro, which came with the f1.8 lens, instead we get a 48 megapixel Sony IMX586, which is paired with the f1.7 lens here. Now, I could talk about how this camera on the Ace performs, but I'm sure what you guys want to know and what I wanted to know was also how it performed in comparison, in I mean, relative to the X2 Pro. So let me show you some comparative samples here. Under good lighting conditions, the Renault AS manages to do better. The pictures are sharper, the dynamic range is more or less similar, but the colors appear more natural with the Renault. Now, taking a closer look at just the Aces pictures, they seem great. Oppo seems to have done a good job with the processing. At least, under good light, there's no noise and the images are detailed. But the real test though lies when the conditions do get more challenging. Under low light, let's now jump back to side-by-sides. Remember, both phones are on ColorOS and hence are using similar nightscape modes. But here, the X2 Pro seems to edge ahead. It captures brighter images. Like I mentioned in the unboxing, this is probably due to the Samsung sensor being larger in size. The Renault Ace also has a reddish tint in some images. Apart from that, the detail levels are quite close. Now looking at just the Ace's samples, we can see that it does a fair job. The images are quite usable. The 13 megapixel telephoto is theoretically an upgrade over the one on the X2 Pro as this comes with the f2.4 lens compared to the X2 Pro's f2.5, but you don't really notice any major differences. This also takes 2x optical zoom shots, does 5x hybrid with little loss of detail. As you can see here, the image still remains quite sharp. Then there's 20x digital zoom, which again is pretty much marketing. The next one is a 8 megapixel ultra wide, and this one's supposed to be a degree wider than the one on the X2 Pro. But again, that's just theory. For all practical purposes, they're identical. It's worth mentioning that the wide angle camera supports nightscape as well as video capture. Finally, we have a 2 megapixel monochrome camera in here that helps with edge deduction, and this is unique to the Ace. The portrait mode images turned out well, and the edge deduction for the most part was on point. As far as videos go, we can shoot up to 4K at 60fps and Oppo provides electronic stabilization at this resolution itself. The footage came out well detailed and stable, but if you want to up the stability even more, make it seem gimbal-esque, then there is also an ultra steady option thrown in for good measure. This is at 1080p though, and it comes in with a larger crop due to aggressive stabilization. Overall, this Renault Asus Optics, pun intended. With all that said and done, let's get to pricing. This phone currently retails in China, the base variant, for 31.99 yuan. Uh, that's about 32,000 Indian rupees converted. Now, the pricing is similar to the X2 Pro. Uh, I mean, a little higher than Realme's uh, 8128. But for that extra cost, what Oppo is offering is marginally faster charging, better display protection, a different set of cameras, along with a build that looks a tad bit different too. The Renault A seems to be one of Oppo's strongest offerings till date. It seems like a very well put together smartphone. It's not available in India at the moment, but if Oppo does end up launching it here, especially given their offline might, this might just be a killer option. 
not just in India for that matter. It's a killer option regardless of which market it launches in. That's how well put together this phone seems. And that's my take on the Reno is. What do you think? Is this a phone that interests you? Is this something that you'd like to see Oppo launch in India? Or do you feel it's way too similar to the X2 Pro for you to care about? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And with that, we get to the end of this review. Thumbs up, thumbs down based on what you felt about it. Subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name's Ash. You've been watching C4 Retech. And I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.